Hey guys, welcome back to more AFK Arena. In today's video, we're over testing Awakened Belinda in the guild trials to test her out. Now, something that I've noticed with her is I feel like she's not playing the way I anticipated her to. I feel like when we see the big flashy ult, we just think Irons, and we remember the days of Irons when he came out, where you just get him to an ult and you win the game. I feel like Belinda's a bit different. I feel like she's like more of a, she likes like teams that can last longer because she does that burn damage, which sort of wears down the team. What I'm finding is her actual ultimate as flashy as it is, doesn't feel like it does as much damage, especially not early on. She does have those ramping up buffs that take her longer to achieve. So she's a unit that I feel like we can't compare to like an irons and I, I'm happy to be wrong. I'm waiting for some better players to do testing when global comes out. Uh, but I'm just thinking she's more built for being in control or sustain based teams where she can ramp up and then melt enemies because she does melt pretty hard with her burning effects. But what I want to show you today is uh, I want to show you some uh, teams that I put up that are more bursty type teams that I was trying to get her to burst enemies down. We do have some wins here at 250 level deficit. And then I want to show you some uh, some replays of 240 level deficit victories uh, across the board in this guild trials uh, with teams that are, like I said, more non-bursty let's just call it that so the first one we're going to look at is going to be this one over here so my idea behind here was we get palmer for buffs we get rain for buffs uh we get chad for his buff as well uh, and then we just got brutus to try and bring some extra survivability that's just what i slapped in so this is a bit more of a bursty comp you're trying to just maximize her damage and nuke uh and once again it doesn't work the way you think it would it does take a little bit longer but let's just jump in and check it out i'll put it on one time speed and you can have a look so this is her coming in. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So there we go, first ult. She does ult pretty fast. There we go. As you can see, like the, the units that are burning get dealt really big damage, but the Verk and the Totem Dude and stuff didn't really take too much. If you look at the Verk now, you can see he's lost like 15 to 20% of his health after we used an extra basic attack on him. So then we do this second one. You can see the damage starts to ramp up. And now that that, that second orb that she threw at Verk just like clapped him. And this is where she starts, like that's where she starts snowballing. So... Like I said, that one was pretty good in that she got really fast con success, uh, consecutive ults. If she kills things, obviously she's going to get more energy and she's going to roll on faster. And that's where the bursty potential comes in. So I still think there is potential for these bursty type teams. Um, but we did have a lot of buff like allocated to her to try and get that one done. So that is that one. The next one I want to show you is this one. So this one, I was just like, okay, let's just get her to ult. Let's use the potion. Let's use Rowan. Let's use Rosaline. She's on Windbinder. Let's just get her to ult fast on the first one. Hopefully get a few more with Rosaline and see how it goes. Now, I put Kinesa and Rook. Kinesa and Rook's just like my favorite tech pick at the moment in the game. They're just like, you, you just throw this dude in... Like, if I just need a front row, I just put Rook in. It used to be Mezoth was a default one. Gorvo is another one that I love using, uh, but that's him there. Um, I put Rosaline front row uh, and then Estrilda the back row so that Estrilda will run away from the... Because um, I want Estrilda to sort of interrupt Fane, but I wanted her something to run away quicker than Rosaline was from the uh, Cecilia. So that's basic strat here. Let's take a look. So you'll see that she will ult incredibly fast with Windbinder and Rowan Potion. So there's the first ult. And you'll see the damage it does. It's not crazy. So you can see nothing really took a big chunk of damage. Like nothing took a massive amount. But it's that burning that she's doing to them that's continuously chunking them down. And that's where the big effect... You can see, like, she hasn't done another ult. And they've dropped so much HP just since her first ult. So now we'll do another ult here. Boom. Boom. And as you can see, didn't even do a hell of a lot of damage there, but it's just that burning. So once you can get those enemies burnt, it does pretty solid. So that is that one. That's my other like attempted burst at a 250 level def uh, 250 level deficit on this one. Uh, we're just going to bounce out of there. Let's jump back in here. Uh, let's tr check the trial leaderboard. So I want to take a look at some replays here. So this one was from Rockstar in the guild on the test server, um, getting these replays. So as you see, this one, I'll just quickly show you, like this one, more sustained base, more tanky, trying to survive uh, and then ramp it up over time. Uh, this one, we've, and I'll go through the replays. Actually, let's do them one at a time. So let's jump in. I'll put them on four times speed so we don't take 
too long here. Actually, we'll just leave it because otherwise you can't see it too well. But yeah, obviously going for a lot of mitigation, a lot of healing. We do have the haste as well from the totem dude, but we've got the chunky Scrag there. We've got Anasta providing the support as well. Um, and you're just trying to survive. And you can see she actually survives pretty well against um, Yorin there, which isn't too bad. The old spear dude. Um, but as you can see, like that, the, the ult, it's not like an irons thing. The ult doesn't just go boom. It's just like, okay, the ult's there, but the burning is where things just, they just melt over time. It, it, it I don't know. It feels like, it feels like a combination for the WoW players between like, y you feel like you're going to be a destruction lock, but you're actually an affliction lock. That's the way it feels to me. If you don't understand WoW, you won't understand that. But it's like, instead of being bursty, it feels like you're more of a dot damage dealer and you just deal damage over time and you just melt things. Um, but you've got a flashy ult, which is cool. So that is that one. Then we get the Tassie done. Happy days. Uh, this one here. Once again, using the dimensional support for it, bringing the CC, the sustain, the survivability, uh, and then just basically having Belinda there to just gradually wear down the enemy team. So let's take a look again. Um, so there's the fire up the top there. You can see the fire already dealing some decent okay damage. It's like not crazy, but after she uses this ult, here we go. She gets the, uh, the blessing, or whatever it is. So there you go. Like I said, the ult, it's just not doing much damage. This is 240 level deficit in guild trials. Um, and then, but this is where it starts to happen here. You got Milan providing some more CC. Here comes the second ult. This one will do a little bit more damage. Actually did a lot more damage. So that one, see this one, it, it just feels really inconsistent. Like I can never pick whether the ult's going to do damage or not. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, this is early testing. So I could be completely wrong on my thoughts here, but it just seems like bursty teams is not the way to go. It's more of the sustain. So this one, we got Rook, we got Chad, we got Fane, and we got Odin. So just a very tanky front row. Uh, and then we've got a real control base back row. And then Belinda there to just gradually deal some damage. So let's take a look at this one. Once again, Rook, Rook and Chad, I'm, I'm really liking these two characters at the moment. So there goes Chad. And as you, obviously, we've got we've got Fane and Odin, like incredible amounts of CC, along with a tanky front row. You're going to survive for ages in this one, and she's eventually just going to get them down. Um, but as you can see there, the ults, not doing too much, like 20, maybe 30% damage on them. Um, but then it's like that that burning afterwards. And when you look at the damage chart, it's, it's like not Odin doing all the damage. It is Belinda, but it's just all coming from that burn. So I'm thinking maybe group strategies are going to be a way to go so that burn can hit more enemies in the area. Um, maybe we do the chicken. <laughs> Maybe a queen type thing. I don't. Maybe Frampton. Something like that could be an option. But it seems like in that group setting, you can see she's doing way more damage than Odin. So it's not Odin doing all that damage when she's not ulting. It is her doing the damage just through that burn. So let's go to this one here and take a look. Once again, this one using Da Vinci Kazard, just trying to lock out the enemy team. Da Vinci Kazard, Mishka, like you're just going for lock out there and then um, Zolrath, you know, to make it all happen quicker. And then just wait for Belinda to gradually melt the enemies. And you can see no one else is doing any damage damage compared to Blinda. But like I said, I want to highlight this one again. When we look at her ult, she should ult one day. This is the slowest she's taken to ult so far. Okay. So there we go. We get the ult off. Boom. Not crazy damage. Like nothing really took that much damage. But now they just start, they, 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 their health just starts disappearing. And, and this is the thing, it's all in the burn. So I feel like it's all in the burn, not in the ult. Like we didn't even land the kill there. Like we didn't even land that back row kill with that ult. Um, so yeah, it's... That's just what I'm saying at the moment. And then obviously she gets the, the added effect where she'll gradually then use her... Uh, She'll, she'll get the, the effect where she's always critting and always ignoring defense. Um, so the, that's where it'll all happen. So let's jump into this one, take a look. Um, and once again, this one, this is more tanky front row. Um, yes, we got, and then we got two buffers. So this is the most bursty one in all the ones we've seen. Um, but once again, we're, we're just trying to CC them at the start, keep the enemies away and let her ramp up. But this is definitely more of a bursty setting uh, than the other ones compared. Sorry, if you can hear the kids running through, the kids are psychos at the moment. <laughs> it's still school holidays. So, you know, these things happen. But there we go. Uh, Mortar's getting the buff. And yeah, so this is like the most bursty one that we had in the replays. Um, but like I said, I feel like it's more of a, just let it burn. 
Anyway, I feel like I repeated myself a lot there. I do apologize. But hopefully that gives you a look at what we're looking at for Belinda in campaign at the moment. Unfortunately, it's Burning Brute. I mean, you can use Scarlet. Scarlet's still top damage in Burning Brute on the test server at the moment. Um, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. When she drops on Global, we'll get more, there'll be more people testing. We'll just look at replays in uh, Cursed Realm and Twisted Realm, and we'll see if she's meta. <laughs> That's pretty much the way it'll go. But uh, anyway, guys, that is going to be it for Belinda. Thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day, and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.